The mysteries of nature are fascinating. Thousands of books have been written in an effort to explain these mysteries. And the man who can best explain them is, of course, our friend with the encyclopedic mind, Mr. John Kieran. Right now, Mr. Kieran is in his library with Paul Milford, his next door neighbor. Let's listen. John, I had an argument with my wife today. That's some lilies of the valley, and I wasn't in favor of it, and she didn't like it. Well, what if you get lilies of the valley, Paul? They're beautiful flowers. Well, I agree with you. They are beautiful, but uh, they're so delicate. And I'm afraid they couldn't stand my wife's not-so-delicate gardening. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Paul. I only push themselves up through layer after layer of heavy tin foil. This I have to see, John. Well, Paul, you'd be amazed at the power of tiny plants. They push slowly, but they push firmly. That's another one of the myths of nature. Now we're going to see a demonstration of the power in plants. Come to think of it, every growing plant is a power plant. Now you take these sunflowers. Here's one of them blossoming very quickly before your eyes here through time-lapse photography. That would take days in the, out in the sun, but here it happens very quickly. Well, it takes power to hold those uh, big sunflower heads up in the air on those stalks. And uh, let's see where this power comes from. The wind blows them about and the rain pelts down on them, but still they stand up. We'll cut down through this stalk and see what does it. The center is hollow, that saves material, but the outer rim is made of stiff fibers. Those are very strong, and that's how this plant manages to stand up as we saw it. Now, this waving field of uh, grain or grass may lift six and a half tons of water in a single day in the growing season. That takes power to lift all that water. And it takes power to hold all the wood in, in great trees. Uh, there may be tons of wood in a tall tree. It takes power to hold it up there. Here's a plant fiber. We attach the upper part to a clamp and uh, tie a platform to the bottom. And we'll put some weights on that platform and see just how much strength, how much power there is in what looks like a tender plant fiber. Now there's two and two tenth pounds, four and four tenth pounds, five and a half pounds. And it's only at five and a half pounds that that plant fiber starts to tear and break. Now we take a copper wire and subject it to the same test. That's two and two tenth pounds, four and four tenth pounds, and there goes the copper wire. And I'll bet you thought that the copper wire was much the stronger. Now in addition to standing on their own feet, uh, plants have uh, other ways of applying power and helping themselves. They run out tendrils of this kind, and they cling to poles or uh, trellises that we put up for them. This is a melon vine, and to carry its heavy fruits, it needs a good deal of uh, power to cling to supports. In this case, it's a heavy melon, which is being held up by those tendrils, and also where it joins the main trunk of the very strong stem, a further application of power in plant. Here's a stone being lifted by... ...that are being planted. You know, they're very small. We cover them over, pat them down, by telling them to be good now. Then when the seeds germinate, you get an idea of the power when you see the way they lift the earth that was pounded down over them. This time-lapse photography has its humorous aspects, of course. Now there are germinating seeds in, in that uh, pot there, and we put a sheet of glass on it, and you notice how the seedlings, as they arise, you just lift that glass off very easily. And a dance of triumph over this exhibition of their power. We put weights on the glass. Still doesn't do any good. 
The plants had too much power. In this case, you'd almost think they had some intelligence, too. They shove the, the weights off first and then go to work on the glass. are lilies of the valley. We'll pull up docks there and see how many layers of dead leaves it pushed through when it first poked its nose up out of the ground. There's one, two, three, there's one on the underside, four, five, six layers of leaves that it poked through when it first came up out of the ground. Now we'll, we'll subject it to another test. We'll put five layers of tin foil over those uh, shoots of lilies of the valley, five. And we'll see if they can fight their way through that in time. In this case, we are taking a picture every hour for 60 days. And you'll see the result here in less than a minute. Well, now you see the shoots of the lily of the valley are poking through five layers of tin foil, proving that lily of the valley is really a very strong-armed girl. Looks like a birthday cake. Now it looks like a luxurious uh, bit of asparagus. We could use some hollandaise sauce. But toward the end here, it takes on the full-flowering view of the lily of the valley, and you can put it in the ready-to-wear department. Now this tree, gives off water at a tremendous rate. A, tree, a big tree may give off 400 quarts of water in a day, and all that water is drawn up out of the ground. That takes power. And the water is given off through the leaves. There may be 100,000 leaves on a tree. So we enclose this leaf under glass, and as it gives off its water, the water condenses on the glass. To prove the uh, power of a growing plant, we put this growing plant in a tube and let its root go down into a tube full of water, and the water is based on a column of mercury. Now, as the plant draws water up out of the tube, the mercury, the rising mercury, shows how the water is being lifted by the growing plant above. We'll pour some mercury into a U-tube. That's mercury that you see bubbling down there. And we'll take the open end of that tube on the right hand side there and apply it to a stalk of a growing plant. Now that growing plant has a root in the ground, in the soil there, that pot, and it is drawing water up out of that soil. And it, as the water is pulled into the right hand uh, column, it forces the mercury down in the center column and the other mercury rises in the left-hand column, proving lifting power of that growing plant. Now here's a further demonstration of the power of growing plants. These are germinating peas in these glass jars. We'll fill them up with water, seal them to make them watertight and airtight, and watch the power applied as the germinating seeds grow inside. Well, there's the first one down. And there goes another one. They'll all go in time. You couldn't get a higher casualty rate in here if you rolled a bowling ball right down the middle. And you know it takes power to roll a bowling ball along. There's another way of applying power in the plant world. This is a dotter. A dotter is a parasitic plant. It looks like something very thin and tender. Of course, uh, these waving uh, tendrils here, looking like snakes or worms or something, uh, are acting that way because of time-lapse photography. It's a very slow process in nature, but here we speed it up for your convenience. The lifeblood. So remember, when you're talking about tender plants in the future, to be very careful about some of them because they have a lot of force and can apply it.
And it ends the trip, Paul. But next week, we'll find ourselves exploring things in a far, far different place through the kaleidoscope. Quoting John Maysfield, we can drive over the earth, swim under the sea, or fly in the eagle's secrecy and guess where the hidden comets be. That's the wonderful thing about my kaleidoscope, Paul. You never know where we'll turn up next. Thank you.